pivot now and talk a little bit about the Biden family and the investigations. A new filing you're looking at right here in an Atlanta federal court. What is it about? Well, now the National Archives says it has located 82,000 pages of emails that then Vice President Joe Biden sent or received with pseudonyms. They missed a deadline to turn over requested documents, so a FOIA request was submitted for the remaining pages, and here you see this filing just yesterday. So the filing says it confirms Biden did use three private pseudonym accounts. The use of private emails, of course, for official business by any government official, now it's discouraged to be used under the law. The National Archives says it's now processing the documents for the purpose of distributing the portions. Conservative groups, as you can imagine, pointing out the stunning size of Biden's pseudonym emails compared to the private email scandal involving Hillary Clinton, it dwarfs them. And joining us now to discuss the latest in this investigation, Chairman of the House Oversight Committee, Kentucky Congressman James Comer. Congressman Comer, welcome to Newsline today. It's good to see you, sir. Good to see you, Bianca. Wow, 82,000 emails. I have a letter that you sent back in August right here to NARA saying, we want to see these emails. But I'm not sure you were uh, prepared for how big this number would be. Uh, NARA decided not to uh, go and uh, pass your deadline here. So my question to you, sir, is are you confident that you'll be able to get these now with this FOIA request and this legal filing? Or will they try to continue to stonewall and block you? Now, we're going to end up getting them. They, they blocked us, stonewalled us on, on everything, uh, but we always get what we, we subpoenaed. And with the 82,000 emails, they've turned over 14. They turned over 14, so they have 81,986 more emails to go. Uh, just like everything with the bank records, there are many more accounts, many more shell companies, many more Bidens involved. Whenever you start digging into the Bidens, you get, you get a whole lot more than what you expect. So I'm sure National Archives had no idea there were that many, but the fact that they have produced 14 but then stopped after that, uh, is unacceptable. So National Archives is is under our uh, radar now. Uh, they're they're involved in the mishandling of classified documents uh, by both Joe Biden as well as Donald Trump. Uh, it seems like they're you know front and center and and always available to dish on Donald Trump, but they can't tell us anything about Joe Biden's mishandling classified documents. Now we find out they have 82,000 emails that were they're using pseudonyms. What were the Bidens trying to hide? I think we know the answer to that, but that's a question the National Archives should be, should be asking themselves. Well, one of them you've already revealed through your investigative work that Hunter Biden is the only one copied on this. And then later there is a call, Vice President, uh, to talk to uh, Petro Poroshenko of Ukraine. So there you go. Uh, so you've revealed some things. Obviously, you want to get to more of that. Also, Congressman, we know that... Uh, Hunter Biden could be subpoenaed, uh, the new Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson. But also, what about James Biden? There's this check now that you've discovered yep. revealing James Biden right here, black and white. If, you know, Democrats want to say there's no smoking gun, there's a direct payment to Joseph Biden for $200,000 there. What you have to understand, and we're going to try to explain this more in detail in, in the coming days, is the Bidens have been laundering money. We've talked about Hunter Biden laundering money, but now that I've subpoenaed and, and have obtained Jim Biden's bank records, both his business and his personal bank records, I can say without hesitation, he was involved in money, money laundering too. And the way you launder money, uh, one way is to say it's in the form of a loan or a loan repayment, because you don't have to show those uh, loans on your taxes. So Joe Biden received $200,000 of money that was laundered through an influence peddling scheme that his brother uh, had with a healthcare company in Florida. That $200,000 that Joe Biden received, uh, whether it was a loan or not, really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, the only way Jim Biden could have paid that $200,000 to Joe was through an influence peddling scheme. So what that check proves is that Joe Biden did benefit from his family's influence peddling scheme. That was the purpose of the investigation all along. But what we're finding is there are more instances where Joe was involved. We've, we've gotten a whole trailer load of documents in uh, over the weekend. I mean, you, you can't imagine how many different bank accounts 
this family had and how many different business names those bank accounts were under. We're finally now able to put all the pieces together for their money laundering scheme. And I can say, Joe Biden, not only was he front and center, not only did Joe Biden know what his family was doing, but he benefited financially as well. You know, the forensic accounting, obviously, you'll be able to sort of trace it, albeit uh, the web may be uh, difficult. You know, final question here, Congressman Comer. We, uh, we came to you right before our coverage of Israel, where we're talking about American hostages. The world is in a perilous place. There's concerns about escalation with Iran. And, and what you're basically saying is our sitting president is, you're saying he's corrupt and there's been influence peddling for years. And obviously, he's up for re-election now, and all Americans don't feel safe here at home. Yeah, we have a weak president. I think we're seeing that. And the results of a, a weak president are international unrest. And you have that with Ukraine and Russia. You have that with Iran and and, and Israel with, with through Hamas. You have that with China and Taiwan now. And that's the direct result of having a, a weak president. Uh, we're concerned about foreign aid. One reason we're investigating Joe Biden is uh, we want to know if he's compromised because of the millions of dollars his family's received. You look at what happened with Menendez with this foreign aid money. I mean, I, I, I'm concerned about the foreign aid business in Congress. I believe there's a lot more instances of the Menendez's and the Bidens than we realize. And, you know, the, the, the days of giving places like Ukraine a blank check need to to be over. But with respect to Israel, I think we all agree for the for the most part in Congress, we have to support Israel. This is our number one ally. And of all the conflicts around the globe, the most crucial uh, to America and the stability of our of our planet is uh, is making sure that Israel can defend itself. Well, chairman of the House Oversight Committee, Congressman James Comer, I appreciate your time today, sir. Come back real soon. It's good to have you in. Thank you. Thank you.